So I can't mm. uh, I can't say I can't say particularly how it's going to play, play out for you. Oh, okay, I did it uh, on the same program. HND building technology and then HND a bachelor of technology in building technology. Okay, fantastic. Sounds like a bachelor's degree. Yeah, bachelor of technology, B tech. That's what we call it here. Okay, that's fine. Mm. And you can apply. Three point four okay. is three point four is um is above the minimum requirements of three point two six over four. Three point four okay. over, over four, right? Yes, please, over, over four. Fantastic. You can apply. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Yusuf, uh, please unmute yourself. Or even than that, Samuel, unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay. Good evening. Um, Hi, yeah, good, good, good evening. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I want to find out more about the PAG program. Um, you said we have to look for supervisors first before we, are, we, we apply. I remember I tried once and I sent a couple of mails and that will require my, my other because I did uh, M4, MEM4, so my other supervisors also write something to them. And I, I, I didn't get it. So I don't know whether I'm going to go through the same process in getting the supervisor or you are going to help me land one. Um, thank you so much. That's a fantastic question, Samuel. The, it's a research-based program. You need to get a supervisor first, so you need to go through that process. Bear in mind that that's, that professor is getting that kind of email from at least 100 other people all over the world. Every so how, day. how do I identify this? You go to the faculty's website. You look at their research interests. Usually you see a page of faculty members and yeah. each of the faculty members have their own research interest. Yeah. So you need to take, you need to painstakingly look at, review every faculty member, you know, look at what their, their interests are. And based on that, you identify the one that you think is, mo is mostly in line with your research interests and write to the person. You need to sound convincing. Your research interest has to, um, has to be, be interested, the, the, the professor has to be interested in what you have to say. So okay. it's, it's a lot of work on your end. Like I said, it's a little difficult to get, but I know of a lot of Afri West African students that are doing research-based programs in my school. And then for, for the PhD, you need a minimum of 77% 7, 7 average. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we can take a few more questions before we round up. Okay, so let me also add my voice to someone's question. So someone also needed a supervisor, similarly as yours, and it, it's a process. Um, as uh, my sister here said, you, you and being, being a, a faculty and also being on the other side of admission, working uh, for the State University of New York, um, the School of Engineering and Applied Science, every student across the world wants that one seat in the classroom or one that a graduate assistantship position or research assistant. What sets you apart from all of them? What makes you so unique that this faculty should uh, pay attention to your email? There is a, uh, there is a, um, um, a terminology called a triple knock. You send an email first one, they don't respond. Second, they don't respond. Do not give up. But there are some technical things that you also need to do that if you are working with top tier, we can help you out with that. Also, um, we've helped students um, get, um, using my experience and some of the experiences of my colleagues who um, have been able to secure um, research assistantship or uh, have already completed their PhD. We, we teach students this. Um, last year, we taught students from Western, uh, uh, Southern Africa, how to do, uh, go through this process. Currently, we have students in Canada and US uh, studying. It's, it's a very tedious process, but you just don't send only an email. 
only an email most of the times do not work. So there are a couple of things that you need to do before um, you can be able to secure um, uh, a supervisor to supervise your work. So um, if you are, uh, you want to go towards that route, reach out to top tier and we'll see how best we can help. All right, next. next. Thank you very Someone. much. All right, you're welcome. Next person, please, before we run up, we have uh, 16 minutes and then we'll be ending. 16 minutes and that'll be the end of the webinar. Next person, Hikma, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. So, all right, there's a question here from a student. He said, I have a second class upper degree in computer engineering with a nine year working experience. In case I want to offer masters in business uh, data analytics, what do I require? Sorry, read the question again. All right. Please, I have a second class upper degree in computer engineering with nine years working experience. In case I want to offer a master's in business data analytics, what do I require? I think that's about it. I mean, you need a minimum second class offer. Um, there are specifics though with that because um, it's a competitive program. So if your second class offer is borderline, you probably may not get in because there'll probably be people with stronger grades, you know, and then with work experience, which is not really compulsory, but it's nice to have, I think you can go ahead and apply, but I need to see the specifics. I'd like to see your secondary, your, um, your undergraduate high, um, transcript so that we can see the specifics and know if, if your application will be completed. Okay, Hikma is ready to ask. Okay, yeah. Hello, everyone. Pick my hand. Please, I apply to study M. Hello, Hikma here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, now. Okay. Good. I applied to study A in Poly. At the University of Lincoln for fall 2022. Unfortunately, I didn't get the admission. The reply or response from the school read after a careful review of my great told me that apparent reason. Meanwhile, I have a GPA of 3.13 and had wanted to know what could possibly be the problem. Any advice for me? Okay, um, so like 3.13, the minimum is 3.26, which is a 70%. 3.13 is not up to 3.26. Besides, maybe there was an influx of, of um, applicants with a higher CGPA. So may, that made yours not competitive. That's probably what happened. Thank you. So please, with that DPA, what available options can I have from the school? I'm sure top tier can give you other options. Okay. Yeah, talk to us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Guys, any questions, please. Um, you can either unmute yourself to ask because um, we really need to go. It's getting late, so we have to prepare for Monday. Any questions? I know Miss Caribou is tired from her travels and she needs to relax and rest for tomorrow. Any questions? Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Uh, please, uh, I actually wanted to know available opportunities for nurses because um, 
It has always been like with the nursing profession in Canada, with that, you have to go with either you have written the IELTS or what. I think there's a whole lot of issues surrounding that. I don't know whether you can throw more light on that for me, please. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's a really good question. Um, nursing at the University of Windsor is is not open to international students right now. So there are more, it's okay. whatever, preference is given to citizens and, and permanent residents of Canada. I'm sure top tier will have other options, but generally getting into nursing in, in Canadian schools is, um, is really difficult because preference is given to permanent residents and citizens. Okay, so, um, also, uh, do you have options? Yes, we do have options. So if um, you having problems getting, um, even in the US, master's in nursing is extremely tight. So far there is only one university, but even with that, you need to write the NCLEX exams pass before you can start a master's program. So directly getting admitted into the nursing program, I know one university in Canada, but it took the guy one year to convince them Again, with that, he needed to first start with getting the license because it is something really focused on the clinical aspect. So no hospital will allow you into the uh, facility if you are not licensed to practice. So please, okay, uh, okay. that is the option. Um, either you can go to South Africa and write the NCLEX exams before you go. Or uh, I don't think you really want to do another undergrad. So most of the nursing students, this is what they do. We help them apply into the uh, uh, public health program. During the summer, they will use the summer to um, read and learn more about uh, on the NCLEX exams. During the spring, uh, uh, the Christmas season, they, they read again, they take classes. So before the start of the third semester, they take the NCLEX exams or their first semester, it depends. Some of them, when if they start in spring, they end early. They use three months to read and write, take the NCLEX exams, oh, okay. so that they are second semester they can go into the nursing program. So don't oh. lie on you either to go with that option by taking public health or public administration for your first semester, pass the NCLEX exams and jump into the nursing program. Because with that, some of oh. even in the US, some of the state is by state. If you don't pass the state exam, you cannot get in. All right. Yo, thanks so much. Okay. Last question. Last question. Going one. Going two. Anyone before we go? Yeah, hello. Anyone before we All right, Anastasia, go. Hello, good evening to everyone once again. Um, I would like to find out um, if you are fortunate to get them public health uh, administration, um, uh, okay, public health um, admission into an university to study. Uh, is it possible we can travel with a family who is a Canadian citizen, a child I'm referring to? Um, okay, so I family <laughs> for study. Uh, generally, yeah. it's, it's, it's a long process because normally you have to go first, but I think Tokyo will be in a better position to advise you on immigration because mine is purely um, admissions and coursework. So, so what do you have to say about it? Uh, mine is the same thing. Uh, yeah, let's focus on first you. The child I'm talking about here is a Canadian citizen already. And the father is there. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah. My name, my name good evening, once again. My name is Saiji. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing that we, yeah, I'm also saying. Um, you need to you need to um, basically, I'll say go first. Come again. 
What's your question again? What did you say? Hello. Please can you hear me? So can you hear what she said was I was getting feedback, so I didn't know why that was coming oh, okay. from. So what yeah. she asked was if she can go with her family, and she said that the ch her child is um, a Canadian citizen. Okay, then I think you should apply. <laughs> Since the, the kid is a Canadian citizen, you need your, your your study permit. So as soon as you get it, you can travel with a student. Um, but I'll advise you to apply, and then when you get it. That's when you can travel with the kid can go anytime they want, but you need a permit to go. So when you have the permit and you are entering the country, you can go. Um, uh, you can also go. So that is not a big deal. But at the end of the day, it's you that needs a permit to enter Canada, not the baby, since you already know that. Okay. Okay. Isaac, you, I think you're muted yourself, please. Uh, ask your question and then we can call it a, a, a night. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Um, Madam did mention of during her presentation, she was uh, opting for the course based uh, article masters rather than the research based. And I had wanted to find out if is there any reason or maybe there's more advantage on that course based masters. Because I have a first degree in the uh, logistics and supply chain, which I obtained the first class option. Okay. So the difference between course based and research based, I will say it again yeah. for the fourth time this evening. For research based, you need to get a supervisor first who will be interested in supervising your thesis before you can make an application, you always need a supervisor first. But for course-based, you don't need a supervisor, you just need to apply and compete with the other students who are applying and get admitted. However, for the course-based masters, it's 16 months, there are no scholarships. But for research-based, sometimes you might be lucky enough to get, um, get some funding and get access to scholarships if you're an exceptional student. So that's the difference at the University of Minnesota. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, guys, okay. thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Please, if you have Hello. any questions. Carrie, uh, you wanna say something? Yes, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity. Um, it was nice hanging out with you guys. Um, also, is a very is a trusted partner. Um, I'm looking forward to your applications pouring in. So reach out to, to him. He'll guide you. His team will guide you on, on what to do, um, help you review your results. And if at any point in time, you know, they need my help, I'll be, I'll be very glad to jump in. So please, um, if you're thinking of making Canada your next um, education um, destination, please think, Wins. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Hello. All right, thank you very much. Uh, guys, what do we say to Ms. Caribo? Um, for me, thank I would say you. thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we truly thank appreciate you. you. Thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate it. So, so I have a question. All right, Ellen, what's your question? Please, I'll ask to know if after you have received the admission, do you have the chance to go with your family? Yes, you do have a chance to go with your family. I think Ms. Caribou already talked about it. But personally, I always prefer you going first. And then when you get there after your first semester, you can add even your transcript to it to let them know that you are currently in school, establishing the fact that you are in school, you are doing well, 
and then you can invite your family over to also come see you. So personally, I would say um, go first. We have had an experience where uh, a family they applied uh, the husband and and the and the uh, the daughter were all refused. And uh, the refusal letter stated that she's going to a new place. She go first, and then when she settles, the family can join her. Yes, after the first semester, the family um, did join. Um, so that is going to be my advice or my take that instead of um, first going, because they are also looking at what are your family tax. If currently you are going, you are leaving uh, your family. Yes, you have family ties. But if you are moving with your family, are you giving them the impression that you are relocating with your family and they're not going to come back to Canada, uh, Ghana? You need to think about all that when you're applying uh, um, applying and taking your family. Um, there are instances when if you are like, you know, well established, you have document that are, you have solid work uh, ties to your home country. Uh, for example, you have your own businesses, you can add your business registration. Uh, let's say you're a medical doctor, your, your spouse is a medical doctor, something really uh, formidable um, to substantiate that you are not just going to stay, you are just accompanying your spouse, fine. But most of the time, my advice is go first, establish you have strong family ties. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm in the northern part and the um, reception is very bad. I'm so sorry. So yes, please make sure you go. And then after that, you can, your family can also join you. So I think uh, that will be all for now. Again, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Caribo. Um, we truly appreciate you. And guys, again, let's say thank you to her. Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.